Okay, Graham, so I got the fuel pump system. I say system because this is a blank right here, so it's just a pass-through. So you still have the look of a mechanical fuel pump. Um, but it's actually just a dummy, a dummy pump, so it doesn't pump. What pumps is the Edelbrock fuel pump mounted right there. And you'll hear it when you take the <clears throat> when you take it to the on position. You'll hear the fuel pump pumping back there. And that's good because it can fill the carburetors up if it's been sitting a long time as opposed to a mechanical that uh, that doesn't do that. What was wrong with your fuel pump? This is the Chinese one. There's a few things wrong, but one of the things is the rubber, which you can't see now, but there's a rubber. Uh, you see it right there. See how that's ripped right there? There was there was another rubber part right there. That was just that was just torn. And that's because it's cheap rubber from China. And the stroke is too long. They just make the fuel pump wrong. So fuel pump's working fine. It's starting up, so I'll start it up for you. So I should just be able to touch it. Loud, so starts up fine. Once it warms up, there's no smoking, there's no popping on either side. It's got plenty of power. Setting the setting the timing is a little tricky uh, because it's missing some stuff to set the timing properly. Um, so I'll show you that. But here it's not it's not popping now. It's running fine. I'll turn it off. So what we, what I did to it was I, you know, re-ringed it, basically did a top end overhaul, but not touching the heads. Uh, what I didn't do is rebuild the carburetors, which you said you had rebuilt, you had rebuilt. And I'm sure your guy's great. However, he's not a Corvair carburetor builder. So like he didn't put new throttle shafts on there. He didn't, he didn't put the choke pull-offs um, on there, which would go right, let's see if I can hold this, which would go right here. Um, like I said, it's missing for proper timing it's missing um, a, a vacuum advance, which has a two, two screws for it here, but it's missing the vacuum advance, which is involved in the timing. It, it changes, it's part of the timing curve that's missing. So what else did we not do? We did not, you know, we don't know the condition of the, of the points. Um, I, guess, I guess my point is if we really wanted to make this thing run uh, perfect, if you wanted me to, I would have to go through you know, step by step, making sure the carburetors are done correctly. I don't know what, I don't know what, uh, what uh, fuel jets he put in there. I'd have to restore the, restore the, uh, what do I call it, the vacuum advance system. Put choke pull-offs on both sides. Um, probably I'd do an electronic ignition. I have to, wa I'd have to walk through it, and and then, you know, get it running perfect. But it's running, it's running good now. It's got more power than really it should have. The thing will almost pretty easily pop a wheelie if you're not careful. Um, so, so that's it for this. If you wanted me to do this, I'll, I'll give you a quote for the things I talked about. They're not huge things, but again, to get it running, you know, perfectly. Because I have high confidence that the uh, part I did was correct, but there's a whole bunch of other parts on it that, that I didn't do that uh, I would have to do in order to have, you know, put my, to make this thing run perfectly, because I have to go through those steps in order to do it. But it runs fine for now. It has a mechanical fuel pump. It doesn't leak. It's got new oil in it, um, because the old oil was, uh, was full of gasoline. So uh, everything seems to be running fine. Okay, so it's fully warmed up right now. So I'm going to show you just, you don't have to pump the, gas just touch it and it starts your idle's fine I turned I turned the idle down you said a month or so ago the idle was set high which I did purposely set it high just because the engine was breaking in uh, but I set the idle down still could be set down a little more it's, it's easy to do but I like where it's at right now like I said if you wanted to, to run better than this and you just start going through the different steps of making the Corvair run 
you know, optimally, but I think it runs fine now. Let's take a look at this white one here. Um, this one's a little, a little more problematic here. Um, this is not a 102 engine. It's a, it's a 61, 1961, 98 horsepower engine. And I know that because you got a 601 head. So you can see it right there. Or I'm sorry, 960 head. That is, uh, that is a 960, is 61, 98 horsepower, and that's a 61 distributor, 61 fans, all 61. So this looks to be a stock, six, those are 61 carburetors, which aren't great carburetors. Um, this had a generator on it, and it still has the generator Delcatron adapter. That's this thing here. That's different. Now, they put an alternator, but they did it by... Kind of jury rigging it basically they made a bracket i mean it's a nice bracket but it's kind of a jury rigged bracket as opposed to this alternator has the correct um the alcatron adapter on it okay what else what else um fuel lines dangerous you see right here where the where the belt is actually rubbing on the fuel line, that's not a good thing. It does have a, an electric fuel pump up front. I looked at that. Basically the same setup as I just did. Except that, except the difference is it bypasses the manual fuel pump. So if I were to rest, restore this, if I were to work on this car, that would be the first thing I would require you to do, basically, because I wouldn't work on this car unless I sorted out this fuel line, this dangerous fuel line system that would be putting that blank in here and getting it set up correctly. Um, one of the things that's different, a major thing that's different here is this is actually a Corvair transaxle as opposed to that over there is a, um, is a VW transaxle. So this has the Corvair suspension. They made kind of, a, it's not a VW underneath there, it's kind of a homemade uh, chassis, I guess. But for me, that's better because I know how to work on the Corvair stuff, but um, you know, there's just a lot of little things like, look down here, the the vacuum advance is running a, a line off of the off of the vacuum balance tube, which may not mean anything to you, but that's incorrect. So timing is going to be difficult to start on this. Like I said, you got the old 61. The best thing to do on this, if is either just get this running. I don't know how it runs, but get it running and sell it as is because there's a lot of money that would need to be put into this. I don't know how the internals of the engine are, but the ex if it's if the external stuff is any any indication, um, probably internally this engine isn't so great either. But could be wrong. Maybe it has good compression. Um, but there's a uh, quite a bit of external stuff to do. Probably the best thing to do if you're really serious about this vehicle other than just kind of flipping it if you really want to restore it was just find a good uh, early model 62 63 engine and then drop that in the place of this one because this is kind of a 61 engines are are not and the setup is not the best they don't have automatic chokes for one like your engine back there has in the green one so i i don't know where you'd want to what your goal is for this but you know another thing that's obviously off here is in this alternator setup you see they made this bracket here uh, so it would fit onto this wrong Delcatron adapter. Well, the belt is skewed. So you see how the belt comes out this way. It should come back the same way. And this, this pulley ought to be about an inch that way and down about an inch and a half. So I would guess that this belt is going to come off when this, when this engine runs because the pulley is just not in the right spot. So yeah, this is uh, this engine looks to be a hot mess. As a general, as a general observation, it's got cool Offenhauser um, valve covers on it, which I actually don't like, but a lot of people like them. And it also has an Offenhauser um, oil pan, oil cooler. Those are expensive, but I think they're just for show for the most part. So yeah, this one is a lot. I'm not sure what you paid for. But this one is a lot rougher than that one there mechanically.